Hello and welcome to episode 16 of Charlotte Mecklenburg History with Dan Morrill. Today is June 28, 2020, and I am Dan's daughter, Mary Dana, and I'm here with Dan through Zoom. And today, my dad, he usually tells me to rush through this first part, but I'm at least going to mention that he is a retired history professor from UNCC. And he is an award-winning local historian. So if you're joining us for the first time, that's his, his background. So today, he is going to be doing part one of his podcast on the history of Myers Park neighborhood and also the Cherry neighborhood. Um, he had told me that there's no way he can get through it all in one podcast, so he's going to break it up. So We'll see how far you get today, Dad. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm going to kind of relax. You know, I'm not going to just try to go, 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 go. No, you know? so, it, it's your show. No, that's right. You do so, it how you want to do it. No, don't get any pay. But you always say that. I know. You're like, know. hey, nobody's paying. It, may, it, it makes you free because then you're a volunteer. Well, anyway. Right. Okay. Let me tell you why I included Cherry, and that will become obvious because. Really what I'm doing is doing a podcast on the neighborhoods that were placed on a farm owned by a man named uh, John Springs Myers. So we'll get to that in a minute. But I see I've got, got a little title page and even put the date down here. See that? Oh, geez. Look at that. I'm so impressed. Well, listen, let, let, let me do a disclaimer. First of all, I am not conversant with all, all aspects of Myers Park history. Um, and, and if anybody finds that I've done something wrong, please let us know. I've tried my best. This is not a scholarly treatise. It oh. is something that I put together and I think it's accurate, but there might be something that is inaccurate. Now, let but, me mention that if people want to contact you, they can email you at danmoral, the number two, at gmail.com. They can. And you also have a website, danmoral.org. Yes, I do. That's correct. And then you can also follow him on Instagram. And uh, it's his username is Dan Morrill, all one word, D A N M O R R I L L. Okay, so and that, I'm also I just want to mention that. Facebook, so, so anyway. if you want to correct him, right, contact him right, in one right, of those right. places. Right. But I've pictured a book here because if any of you really want to read an excellent, and I mean excellent, history of Myers Park, and it does deal with cherry as well you need to go to the duke mansion which is in myers park and which we will talk about and buy this book it is by mary norton kratt thomas w hanchett i know them both well they're excellent researchers they're excellent writers it's an excellent book so you can get it at the Mint Museum, I mean, at the Duke Mansion. Duke Mansion. Right. And you ought to buy it if you're really interested in the history of Myers Park. Now, I haven't used any photographs from this book. I want to make that clear. No copyright problem. <laughs> I haven't used a single photograph. Okay. So, now, I want to spend a little bit of time with John Springs Myers because Myers Park is named for him. And you know, I feel a sort of personal connection with what Jack Myers did because he was better known by most people as Jack. Because I live on Middleton Drive, as some of you know, that watch the podcast on Eastover. And this was uh, part of his land. I'm literally right now sitting and my house is sitting and you grew up in a house 
that his own land that was owned by Jack Myers and that was part of his farm. It mm -hmm. was a tenant farm on his farm. So, now Jack Myers is a fascinating man. Look at the years of his birth, 1847. He died in 1925. I think that made him 78 years old when he died. And he was a dreamer. He belonged to a group of individuals, and we'll meet some others in the second half of the 19th century, who envisioned that Charlotte was going to be a consequential place. And he really tried to work to make that happen. He wanted Charlotte to be a world-class city to use an often overused term. And Jack Myers was truly a dreamer. He was really a dreamer. He was, he was a man who had spirit and inspiration. When he was 18 years old, which was the year that the Civil War ended, Jack Myers, who came from an affluent family, started buying land to the immediate southeast of Charlotte because he understood that even after the Civil War, cotton was going to be the big cash crop. And we've looked at some of these maps before, but I think mm -hmm. let's look at them again. You remember this was Providence Road. And this was originally Sharon Road, named for the churches that they went to. Mm -hmm. Now, this map is obviously 1892. And you can see that there's relatively little development in the area. Now, but I'm going to show you uh, now a, a, a clipping from the newspaper. And he, by the way, just to, to, to go back to the map a minute. He ended up partly through inheritance and partly through purchase. He had a cotton farm of over 1,100 acres. He was a big time cotton farmer. Yeah, that's a big farm. And that's why he had so many tenant farmers on his land because they could help him grow just more cotton. So, and you can see he even owned this land over on the east side of Providence Road, which is, as I've said before, is where I live, right in this, mm -hmm. this tenant farm. Now, what it says here, and, and please excuse me, I am gonna read it because it really does give the entire idea that he had. And let me read it. As a sideline to his business. Now his business was growing cotton. Mm -hmm. Mr. Myers, as early as the 80s, now that's talking about the 1880s, right. became imbued with the idea that Charlotte gave forth promise of becoming a city of more than ordinary consequence and determined to be among the first to bring about such a result. So here's a guy, he has an idea. Charlotte's gonna be a really important place and he wants to be among the pioneers to begin to make that happen. He accordingly began to lay out lines to run streets and set out trees and flowering shrubs such as he thought would add to the beauty of the naturally beautiful landscape. So he has this farm, right? Mm -hmm. And he's growing a bunch of cotton, but let's look at this map. This is 1905. Now again, compare it with that map. And you can see there are a lot more dots 
houses. Right? Houses, and those all represent houses. Now, I'll show you where his house was in a minute, but he began in the 1890s and the early 1900s to develop two areas very different. One was for African American folks, and one was for for white folks. Now you can see I've got an error here because some said they had trouble seeing the cursor. Yes, see, that's true. There, it's so says, tiny on the screen. I know, I know you tried and, to and adjust it. it. Big, but you can right. see that says Myers Park. Yes. Now that is a very important matter, and I'm going to reinforce this in a minute. This is 1905. Now you'll see a lot of people will say, when was Myers Park established? And they'll say 1912. Well, there was a first Myers Park and there was a second Myers Park. And the first Myers Park, I'll show in a minute, clearly began to be established as early as 1901 and it was because of this vision that he had he didn't want providence road just to be a farm road he wanted it to be a place of grand houses and also he wanted to create an area of beauty and i'll take about talk about that in a minute now look you see there's a house here house here house here house here then you go back here and their houses back here in fact this was the house he lived in but i'll talk about that in a minute so i'm going to talk first about this first myers park okay so let's 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 look at it now let me give you some evidence you know people like to see the facts like, what's your source what's <laughs> oh your no source? <laughs> All right, Charlotte News, November 6th. What's the year, Mary Dana? 1902. Way by before five, 1912, right? Way before. By the five acre plot we are offering in J.S. Myers Park. So that's, it's, it's, they're using his name then. In fact, they always use his name for Myers Park, but they were doing J.S. Myers in this ad. And you see that. He's, he's selling big plots of land, five mm -hmm. acres, because he wants to get wealthy people out there. Now understand in 1902, there aren't any automobiles in Charlotte. They're not any automobiles. Okay. The closest place you can get a street car or a trolley is over now where Elizabeth Avenue runs into Hawthorne. Otherwise, you had to go in a buggy. But he's okay. selling lots, okay? Now, let me show this. Again, this is 1902. For a beautiful building location, buy five acre plots we are offering at J.S. Myers Park. Well, there's no question that there was a Myers Park. Here, look here. Five acre Nin plot. Look at 1901. That 1901. August 20th, 1901. Myers Park. Now he's saying located Myers Park just east of the city on the new park drive from Dilworth to Elizabeth. <coughs> what we now call East Moorhead Street. Mm -hmm. You know where you know where Queens Road comes up and touches um Moorhead? Providence. Prime, you know where it yes. touches property. And it well, I'll show you in a minute. That was originally a road to go from Dilworth to Elizabeth, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, here's that map again, and I'm going to show you what's left. All right. Mm -hmm. What remains of that original Myers Park? Only two houses and a street network, but I'll show you that in a minute. Now, I particularly want you to see this. Do you see this? You go to this arrow and come down. You see that loop that comes up here? Uh-huh. You see the loop? Yes. Well, that loop is still there. Uh, and, yes. And you see this arrow here? 
You the, see this Yeah, the arrow? yellow arrow. That's, arrow? Yeah, that's where Meyer, Meyer's family had a farmhouse there. He inherited a farmhouse and about 300 acres of land from his family in 1869. Mm -hmm. And he moved with his wife and they lived in that farmhouse. And the farmhouse faced toward Providence Road. It faced toward Providence Road. So he, in essence, on the top of the hill, looked down to this area right here inside that loop. Okay. Is that is that area inside that loop? Is that my I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you in just a minute. Okay, I'm jumping the gun again. Okay. I'm gonna All show right. you in just a minute. Be patient, child. It's a wonderful <laughs> virgin. Now let's see what's left. Now here's the Woford house. Now the Wofords, Mr. Woford moved to Charlotte in 1908. So that's during the time that this new Myers Park is, is being developed by J.S. Myers, okay? Mm -hmm. He moved here from Winston-Salem and he had strong Moravian backgrounds because the Moravians, in fact, his family donated the land where the Moravian church, now known as the little church on the lane, was built because they had this Moravian connection and their family were charter members. He moved here for strictly business reasons. He had business ties both in North Carolina and in South Carolina. And so he thought Charlotte was a more centralized place to live. Now, a lot of people know that that is now a most recently been, what's it most recently been, Mary Dana? Uh, Harry and Bryant Funeral Home. Oh, is that the Harry and Bryant That's Funeral Home? That's the Harry and Bryant Funeral Home. I well, recognize now, it. Now, it's going to be torn down. It, oh, it's not oh. long for this world. They're going to build an office building there. Oh, that's sad. but even though so one of the two houses is going to be gone. So mm -hmm. that be it. Um, a lot of people remember this is now. This is before it became a funeral home. Look how they changed it. Yeah, they, they changed it a lot. Yeah. Now, when I came here for a business to be interviewed to become a faculty member at Charlotte College. Now UNCC. In Jan now UNCC. <laughs> in January of 1963, I ate lunch here in what was the Ming Tree restaurant. Your your mother <laughs> talks a lot about the fact she loved the butterscotch pie. At the Ming Tree. I've heard a lot of people talk <laughs> about almond cookies. And I got a, a response from somebody that said they had the best tea i'm sure it was sweet tea the best sweet tea in town and he and his buddy would ride their bicycles up there when they lived in the neighborhood just to get the tea but that was one of the original that's that's there that's the kind of house that's the kind of person that j.s myers wanted to be there now this as i say this isn't long for this world yeah and it's one of only two that's left mm. Now, the other one is the Tees house. Now, Tees was a gold mining engineer. He made a lot of money on gold in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Now, the Tees family is still a very, very prominent family here in Charlotte. They built this house in 1898. Now, I want you particularly to look at those two dormers up there. Okay. And I want you to look at how these windows are arranged because it's been changed, okay? Here it is in a later iteration, and here it is today. Now, this house had to be moved or it would have been destroyed. Uh, and it's now on Ardsley Road, but let me show you where its original location was. It's where that Walgreens drugstore is. In other words, her. it was sitting right there. And when the drugstore came, it was a designated historic landmark. And we got them to move the house over to Arsley Road. And so that one remains. And it's now used 
as the administrative office for the Duke Mansion. That's where the people who basically operate the Duke, Duke Mansion have their offices. Okay. So with the destruction of the Wolford House, this is going to be the only one left. Now you asked a question. You said is you're you're fascinated by this loop. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you where the loop is. Okay, let me take you around the loop. All right, you're going. You, this is the corner of Ardsley and Providence. You got me. Yes. You're uh, going. You're going south on Providence. It's like across the street from the Manor Theater. That's right. You turn on it, and there's Ardsley Road. And you can see there's the tease oh, the house. house, right? That's what you see right on the right. Now, if you drive a little bit beyond, here's I drove from here a little bit beyond Hermitage, Mary Dana. See that land right there? Yeah. You see that open <laughs> land right there? Yes. Does my cursor pick it up at all? Well, if to me, I can see it. Yes. <laughs> that is Myers Park. That is the original area that they called Myers Park because that's where John Springs Myers planted the flowers, planted all the stuff. And it's really interesting what's happened to that original Myers Park because now it's been totally sealed off from Providence Road. They put up all kinds of trees there to block it. But originally as you came down Providence Road, you would look and see all the shrubs and flowers in the original Myers Park. Now here, I'm going down Hermitage. You've seen this open land over here on the left. There's a great big leaf magnolia tree, mm -hmm. big one uh, that was planted here. I bet you 10 to one, don't know, but I bet you 10 to one that John Springs Myers planted that big leaf magnolia. And that was part of that trying to dress up the original Myers Park. So you drive down Hermitage, there it is on the left again, and then you turn and go back to Providence Road. Now, look here, here's the loop. This is a 1912 Sanborn map. What does it say right there? Myers Park. Okay. So if you really wanna be skilled, Mary Dana, you wanna be an expert, Somebody asked oh, you, uh, what do you think about Myers Park? The answer is, which one? And they'll say, huh? Uh, are you talking about the 1901 Myers Park? Are you talking about the 1912 Myers Park? That's the 1901 Myers Park. And you see, what, what Jack Myers was doing, he was trying to make a really impressive place visually. He was trying mm -hmm. to make this, you know, Charlotte could really grow because understand, this was not in the city of Charlotte. This was in Mecklenburg County, but he saw this as a way to inspire that development and inspire that growth. So, is that area of land there still called is it called Myers Park is the park oh, the pe pe called but Myers listen, Park Mary Diana, except for the good people who watch this podcast nobody knows that was the original Myers Park I do not know who owns that land I should and I could do it easily enough by looking at deeds but I think that these people mm -hmm. they just their lines go out to the street I think that's who owns it now, but I don't I, know. Because people use it as actually like a park, you know, where they'll well, they do, but I don't think I time. don't think it's publicly owned. That would be, okay. you know, one of the things about, you know, research is like a detective story. Mm -hmm. You're always trying to find out more, and that would be a great thing for somebody to do. But that's the original Myers Park. One house left, two now: the Wolford House and the Tees House soon to be the T's house. And now, as I said, this is totally sealed off. See, when you came down Providence Road, say in 1905, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been just a line of trees. It would have been open. Yeah, and now it's all seen, trees. Exactly. Right. Because 
essentially these people want their privacy. Okay. That's that's really what's uh, caused that to happen. All right, now, remember I told you? Two areas. This is Myers Park. There's there by the way, that here it is. This is this is the Myers Park. There's that loop. There's Mr. Myers's house. All right, now we're gonna go to the other era. You see it? Yes, see Cherryton. 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 Is what it says. Now, this is an interesting issue. You know, historical research is so interesting. <laughs> I went down and well, I didn't go down. You can do about everything online now. I went down and searched the deeds to see the first piece of land that John Springs Myers bought. And he bought it on July 6th, 1865. And it was the area, and it's identified one of the, the last columns Doe means ditto, so there were two or three um, documents related to it. But you can see it, the last column in the Register of Deeds would tell you where, what, what the name of it was, what the name of the area was. Mm -hmm. And you can see it says Cherryton. Now this really, really blows a myth. A lot of people will tell you that Cherry, which until recently was an historically African American neighborhood, was built for servants to work in Myers Park. I ha I have heard that from some people. Yeah. Well, they are wrong. Now. First of all, the neighborhood, just to give you, I'm getting a little bit ahead of it, but the neighborhood was first planted in 1891. The earliest reference we've seen to a Myers Park is 1901. Right, so Cherry came first. So Cherry came first, exactly. And also, there will be people that will tell you, well, it was named Cherry after the neighborhood was established. Well, 1865, it's known as Cherryton. Any now, idea why? Well, you know? and, and this might be, I do not know. But I have heard, and I think it would be tough to find out, that it was because of cherry trees that grew on the land where the neighborhood is now. But now, look, here's J.S. Myers, nice homes for colored people gives the street and where is it cherryton 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 now you will see cherry referred to as uh cherryton cherry town and as it's evolved they just now call it cherry but let me let me let me say something here this is this is really interesting this is <clears throat> John Springs Myers, and I'm a great admirer of John Springs Myers. You know, I have had some people come back. I mean, I tell you, man, some people they're, they're, they 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 can't they can't get out of one issue. They just pound you with it. And I made a statement on Facebook that I admired John Springs Myers. He died on November 1st, 1925. Interestingly enough, he died on his birthday. Now, he died on November 1st, and this is an article that appeared in the Charlotte Observer on November 3rd, 1925. And it's a resolution that was printed in the paper from African-American citizens of Charlotte thanking um, this man, uh, Myers' death deplored by colored citizens. Now, people will say, well, didn't they have deed restrictions in Myers Park? Yes, 
was it for white people only? Yes. But you know, I would say, you know, look look beyond what was the custom of that time, uh, as deplorable as it was, and try to understand that even even with that system being in place, that human beings could do good things. By the way, how are we running on time? Oh, you know, I forgot to start the timer right on time, but I think you've been talking about 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Yes, that's right. I know 27, because that's when I started my timer, but I started it late. Well, well, I'll do a little bit more. Okay, okay. now look, look what they said. It says here, he, now this is what the, this is what the black leadership said, okay? Mm-hmm. That's what he, was in the paper? He, is this, this what was, was in the, the paper. paper? Right. November 3rd, 1925, Charlotte Observer. If any of you doubt me, go look it up. Okay. He who gave to the colored people two church sites, all right, and the present new public school site, and a whole block for a recreation ground in Cherrytown. Now, there they call it Cherrytown. Mm-hmm for the benefit of the colored people. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. I say this now, church here is, is still Cherry. There. This is the 1929 Sanborn map. Here okay. is Cherry. You can see it was very dense. Yes. And what Jack Myers was trying to do, you know, I hear all these romanticized visions of Brooklyn, the Brooklyn neighborhood of Charlotte or Second Ward. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it meant a lot in terms of human interrelationships. But you know, it wasn't really in terms of its built environment. It was a little bit scruffy in places. Well, Jack Myers wanted to create a curvilinear street system and a place where colored people could own their homes and could rent decent housing also could have recreation, also would be able to build churches easily, and also become educated. Now you see this, one of the things he did was to create a church site. Now this is Luther Street, that era is Luther Street, and it's pointing toward this building right here. Okay. Now this is, this, I believe this is the oldest building on the uh, Jack Myers farm, built in 1896. This is Mount Zion Lutheran Church, and he gave the land for this church to be built. Okay. Okay. He donated now, this it. Is a, so this is a park that many of you go by. Oh, the, it, I've been driving through Cherry for 50 years. Mm hmm. Well, close to it. And this park is right there in the heart of Cherry. And, it, you know, it's heavily used. You see people playing basketball, whatever. He gave the land for that, for that park. And, you know, this was a, he was an Episcopalian, St. Peter's Episcopal Church. By the way, his father, gave the land for the campus for Johnson C. Smith University. So these were very, for their time, these were very visionary people. Now, here is an arrow pointing toward the school site that he designated, the school. And this is the Morgan School, which is named for a member of the Myers family. I think he was a son, but I hadn't researched that. I'm not sure. I know it was named for Morgan Myers. And that building is still owned by the school system. And it's in the heart of Cherry. And also, you know, there was a commercial center for the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to show you the type of housing. You know, this was very a uh, bungalow style housing. As I say, this Cherryton, Cherry Town, or Cherry, Cherry came into existence in the 1890s. And it was all due to the feelings and aspirations 
of John Springs Myers. Now, I want to show you what's happened to Cherry Bay, Dana. I have seen that. Now, <laughs> we got enough time to talk a minute. Uh, sure. What do you, you, you know, he, here's my thought about it. I don't criticize uh, developers, but I, I tell you, I bet you, you know, I, you know, you compare that with that. I mean, that, wait a minute, that, <laughs> with that, with that, with that, with that. With that, with that yeah, with it's, that. A, it's a lot different. It changed the neighborhood, the look of the neighborhood, the aesthetic. Well, also, um, my guess is that the people who did this would have learned more about the history of Cherry if they had had the opportunity to watch this podcast than otherwise they would. Because, you know, it's just obliterated any care. And my thoughts are, would there be a way, and by the way, these still exist, would there be a way that you could have new housing put in here and yet retain some feel of the street frontage of these particular houses? Oh, well, it's kind of like what they're, we they're, talked they're about. Gonna go. They're all going to go. They're all going to go. You know go. how we talked about what's happened up in Noda. Right. Kind of similar. Exactly. Exactly. Now, I'm going to end up for today. Have I got time? Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to end up for today because I'm going to be, wait, I got to go this way. Just a minute. You're having technical <laughs> difficulties <No, it's, laughs> with a sound pink, effect. Pink, too. Bam, there you go. Now, okay. Next time we're going to talk about the second Myers Park. Okay. And, you know, there are two individuals that come in some ways from the very same viewpoint that John Springs Myers did. One is Daniel Augustus Tompkins. I think we've mentioned him before. Yes. I'll say more about him next time. Tompkins wanted Charlotte to be a consequential place. The other was George Stevens, graduate of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. In fact, allegedly, he was a fantastic baseball player. He was a good oh, football player. Funny. In fact, the story is that he threw the first forward pass that was ever thrown in a football game. Now, I don't know if that's true, but the second Myers Park grows directly out of the fact that George Stevens married Jack Myers's daughter. Okay. And he became Jack Myers's son-in-law. Mm -hmm. And George Stevens, who was a big banker and also involved in real estate, he bought his father-in-law's land. And he said, I'm going to make it even better. And that's where we get the Myers Park that we all know today. Today, okay. But me and Ada, we will talk about that next time. Okay, well, that sounds because good. Because that will be the next story. Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Dad, for all that information. It's definitely a lot. And we will continue on next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.